Hello, Vital Signs. Today we're going to talk about harmonic centrality. I suggest you watch my introduction to graph theory and graph theory and centrality videos if you haven't already, as those videos will introduce you to the concepts of distance in a graph and centrality. Harmonic centrality is a centrality index. That is, it quantifies the importance of individual vertices in the graph. When normalized for the size of the graph, this centrality index ranges from 0 to 1, where 1 represents the most important vertex possible, and 0 represents the least important vertex possible. You'll see how it assigns values to vertices like this in just a second, but basically, vertices with high normalized harmonic centrality will be either directly connected to many other vertices in the graph, or close to most vertices in the graph. On the other hand, vertices with low normalized harmonic centrality will have relatively few connections and are probably many degrees removed from the other vertices in the graph. A vertex with the highest possible normalized harmonic centrality of 1 will be connected to every other vertex in its graph, like vertex 6 in this graph. You can begin to see how this would have real-world applications. If we model people as vertices in a social network, then vertices with high harmonic centrality would represent influential people who are well connected, and vertices with low harmonic centrality would represent people with little influence due to few connections. How does harmonic centrality differ from the more common measures of centrality, like degree centrality or closeness centrality? Well, harmonic centrality for a vertex x is defined as the sum of the reciprocal of the distances between that vertex x and every other vertex in its graph, not including itself. To calculate harmonic centrality, pick a vertex x to analyze. Now pick some other vertex y in the graph, and calculate the distance between those two vertices, and then take the reciprocal. Let's call this value a distance reciprocal. Now pick another vertex y, keeping vertex x fixed, and calculate the distance reciprocal between the fixed vertex x and the new vertex y. Repeat this process over and over, picking different vertices y and calculating their distances and distance reciprocals to the fixed vertex x until you have exhausted the supply of vertices y that are not x. Then, take the sum of all of these values to get harmonic centrality for vertex x. So how does this tell us what vertices are important in the network? Well, remember what harmonic centrality is, a sum of distance reciprocals. When the distance between vertices is high, like vertex 1 and 6 in this graph, the denominator in the distance reciprocal is also high, meaning that the value of the distance reciprocal itself is low. If a vertex is really far from most vertices in its graph, you're going to end up with a sum of many low values, resulting in a low harmonic centrality for that vertex. Now picture a vertex that is close to every other vertex in its graph, such as vertex 3 in this graph. In this case, the distances between vertices are low, leading to a higher value for the reciprocal of the distance. Something at or close to 1, since the minimum possible denominator is 1. And when we sum over all vertices, we end up with a larger sum. So vertices that are farther from most other vertices in the graph have low harmonic centrality, and vertices that are closer to most other vertices in the graph have high harmonic centrality. Yet there is a problem here. This is not normalized for the size of the graph. What does that mean? It means that we can't compare vertices in graphs of different sizes. For example, say we have a graph of five vertices like this. What is the harmonic centrality of the middle vertex, vertex 1? Well, it's 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. So 4 is the harmonic centrality of vertex 1. All right, so now say we have a graph of 12 vertices like this. What is the harmonic centrality of vertex 12? It looks like vertex 12 has a harmonic centrality of 
That's interesting because it seems that Vertex 12's harmonic centrality is actually higher than Vertex 1's harmonic centrality in the previous graph. Yet would you say that Vertex 12 is more central or important to its network than Vertex 1 is to its network? I don't think so. Vertex 1 in the previous graph is crucial, as without it, its network wouldn't be connected at all. Also, each term in the harmonic centrality calculation for Vertex 1 was the maximum possible, 1 over 1. Yet by virtue of the number of vertices in the second graph, Vertex 12 ended up with a higher harmonic centrality, even though most terms in its calculation were less than those in the calculation for Vertex 1's harmonic centrality. That means that even for unimportant nodes in large graphs, harmonic centrality can be higher than very important nodes in small graphs. How then do we normalize harmonic centrality so that we can make comparisons between the centralities of vertices in different sized graphs? We normalize by dividing harmonic centrality by n minus 1, where n is the number of vertices in our graph. Why do we divide by n minus 1 to normalize? Well, this results in a centrality measure that is always between 0 and 1, because n minus 1 is the maximum possible harmonic centrality for a vertex in a graph of n vertices. And why is that? Well, think about it. How many terms are being added together in this sigma expression? n minus 1 terms, as each term is the distance reciprocal between a fixed vertex x and another vertex in the graph, and there are n minus 1 other vertices in the graph. And as we covered before, the highest possible distance reciprocal is 1 over 1 found when the vertices have the lowest possible distance of 1. So if there's n minus 1 terms, and the maximum possible value for each term is 1 over 1, then the maximum possible harmonic centrality for a vertex in a graph of n vertices is n minus 1. And if we divide harmonic centrality by this maximum possible value, we will get a number between 0 and 1 where 1 means our vertex has the maximum harmonic centrality possible for being in a graph of its size, and 0 means our vertex has the minimum harmonic centrality possible for being in a graph of its size. Revisiting our earlier example, we can calculate the normalized harmonic centrality for vertex 1 in graph 1 and vertex 12 in graph 2. Vertex 1's normalized harmonic centrality is 1. Vertex 12's normalized harmonic centrality is 0 0.5. Much better, our normalized harmonic centrality measure has picked up on the fact that vertex 1 is much more important to its graph than vertex 12 is to its graph. Finally, I'd like to leave you with a look at why harmonic centrality has some advantages over other types of centrality, like closeness centrality. Harmonic centrality is capable of quantifying vertex importance in disconnected graphs like the one shown, while closeness centrality is not. For example, normalized closeness centrality depends upon each vertex being reachable from every other vertex. This is because it's based on the sum of the distances between vertices. And how would you calculate a sum of distances where some distances are infinite or undefined? It cannot be calculated. You might ask, what if we just left out the disconnected vertices and use closeness centrality on a connected subgraph? Well, you'd get an artificially high centrality measure for the remaining vertices, as they aren't really that important to the highly disconnected graph that they fit in, even though they are central to the subgraph. So how does harmonic centrality fix this problem? Normalized harmonic centrality fixes this problem by treating distance reciprocals between vertices that cannot be reached by each other, such as vertices 1 and 2 in this case, as 0. Even in a graph like this, normalized harmonic centrality comes out with reasonable numbers for the importance of these vertices. Most of the vertices in this graph will have a harmonic centrality of 0, and even the connected vertices turn out to not be very central at all as we would expect from the fact that there are many vertices that they are not connected to. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, like, comment with your favorite centrality measure, and share with your friends. Have a great day.